watch The Cash Cab. I don't know if anybody else likes The Cash Cab. But I'm really bad at it. Like, I never, ever know the answers. They would kick me out. Like, I wouldn't probably make it through, like, the first stoplight. I would need them to do, like, the extra bonus thing. Because I never, ever get it. But if I rode to New York, I'd be so excited. If I got in the Cash Cab, I'd be one of the people that freaked out and got super happy and hope that they'd give me really easy questions. But um, something that this show, uh, this show goes along with basically every other show on TV right now, reality TV, and it has to do with winning money. That's what our society has come to. Money is everything. When in school you want to go for college, what are you going to make the most money in? I remember when I was an undergrad, I didn't want to be a doctor anymore. I was horrible at biology. My mother didn't care, and we fought, and we fought, because I was going to be an anesthesiologist and be rich and take care of her and this and that. And I want to be, at that, that time, a writer, and she hated that idea. So she fought with me, but now she's she still wanted me. I ended up doing criminal justice, and she still wanted me to be a police officer, but that's another battle. But um, this made me think about the the verses in Mark 10, 24 through 26. It says, the disciples were, named, were amazed at his word, but Jesus said again, children, how hard is it to enter the kingdom of God? It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Um, these verses made me think about what are we investing in? What are we investing our time in? And our, a lot of people in our society, their time is invested into making more money. So um, it, it really reminded me of, if one is solely invested in, invest, investing in themselves, their security and their own comfort and pleasure, then that's probably a bad investment if that's your only concern. Now, if we're investing in positive things, those things seem to come along the way with it. If we're investing in godly things where he's taking us, then he's gonna provide those things for us automatically. And it might not be easy, it may not be what we consider comfort, but we have comfort in Christ because that's what Jesus tells us. Um, so it really made me think about that and the idea that observing the law and just primarily observing the law doesn't change one's heart, but it comes with having, it comes with not focusing on the material things and putting your focus on Christ that your heart begins to change and the material things aren't as important to you anymore. Um, Jesus is saying that we should rid ourselves of the possessions that anchor our soul to this world. For some people, it's one struggle. For some people, it's another. Um, I come from an athletic world. I played softball for 18 years of my life. And for me, that is something that before I recommitted my life to Christ, that was what I was anchored in, was softball. That was my God. For other people, something like this, it's money. But in all things, it, whatever we're putting before Christ, that is what we're anchoring ourselves to, and that is going to make it harder for us to enter the kingdom of God. Um, this also made me think about whose terms are you living by. Again, I work with athletes all the time, and a lot of times it's they want to go all the way up until it's not that comfortable anymore. And it's kind of like, eh, well, I like these terms, but I don't really want to live by that because it's kind of hard. So we definitely need, and that's really in reality everybody, we, when it's uncomfortable, we don't really like it that much that we need to figure out whose terms are we going to be willing to live by, by Christ's terms or by our terms? Are we willing to sacrifice that? Are we willing to possibly not be that comfortable in life, but be rewarded in afterlife? And also that be rewarded by other areas, such as you know, just having the connection with people, knowing that just, you're having the joy of them growing, seeing their life dramatically change. Um, there's people in this class right here that we hear each other's stories. I've gone through a lot of different classes with people and see them talk about their testimonies and preaching to people and things like that, that that is the greatest joy to them. And that means a lot more than investing your entire life into making a gazillion dollars and you're fruitless in any area other than money. So um, my challenge is to invest in more than just basically money, of finding and anything else that anchors you to this world alone is what brings you joy through Christ. What is Christ calling you to in order to fulfill what he has in the calling for your life? So, yeah, for you guys.